morning, Mashpee families, friends, faculty members, members of the school committee, selectmen, honored guests, Superintendent DeBoer, and most importantly, the outstanding graduates for the commencement ceremony for the Mashpee Middle High School class of 2018. I thank you for joining us as we celebrate this exciting day to recognize the hard work and dedication of our students and to wish them great success as they move on to the next chapter of their lives. As we open this morning's ceremony, I would respectfully ask everyone to please stand and join the Mashpee Middle High School Graduation Chamber Choir as they perform our national anthem. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red I'd ask you to uh, please remain standing. Tricked you. Uh, thank you to Miss Keller in our graduation uh, chamber choir. Outstanding job. I would now like to invite Senior Shyla Bingham Hendricks to the stage to open our ceremony with a Wampanoag prayer. Suck, Natasui Shyla Hendricks. Good morning. My name is Shyla Hendricks. T today I will be reciting a Wampanoag prayer. Pion Toma Onk Wachi Asia Kwampakish. Manak Ka Nikonahachi. Katapatanamu Wachi Wami Kiakasinish. Katapatanamu Wachi Kisak. Katapatanamu Wachi Anakwasak. Katapatanamu Wachi Aki. Katapatanamu Wachi Siku. Anama Anian Namana VP Winika. Anama Anian Asina VP Songwa. A prayer for every time. Creator and ancestors, I thank you for all things. I thank you for the sky, I thank you for the stars. I thank you for the land, I thank you for the rivers. I thank you for the oceans. I thank you for all creatures. I thank you for all of my relations. Help us to see only what is good, help us to do only what is right. Thank you. stay a little longer. Uh, at this time, again, thank you, Shyla, uh, for sharing your culture with all of us in attendance today. It's really a great thing to be in Nashville to have this opportunity for our graduation, so thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome the Red Hawk Singers. Mr. Dave Pocknett has instructed members of the Wampanoag tribe in this rich tradition, and it has been handed down from generation to generation with great pride. We thank you, Dave, and the members for sharing your tradition with us on this important day.
Hello, my name is Chinoke Parkman. Uh, we are the Red Hot Singing and Dancers. We are here in Matthew, Massachusetts, in the Matthew Mockingout tribe. Uh, we're going to sing you an on-song first, and then we're going to send uh, these students off with a uh, traveling song so they can go on their, uh, their ways as adults in the right way and uh, be comfortable in the, the new settings that they'll be putting themselves into.
Thank you so very much for that wonderful contribution to our ceremony. It's something that we are certainly honored to have you share with us today. Thank you very much, Mr. Parknett and the singers. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium our superintendent, Mrs. Patricia DeBoer, for some opening remarks. Thank you. First of all, before I start, I just want to sort of take in this moment because visually it's very meaningful to see so many families and, and friends here is really touching. So it's, it's one of those things like breathe and really take it in. So it's with great excitement and pride that I welcome all attendees to, the, to today's graduation. The school committee, town leaders, our community partners, members of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe, the dedicated staff of the Mashpee Public Schools, parents, siblings, grandparents, and friends, and most importantly, this amazing group of young people who are going to make our world a better place, our graduates, members of the class of 2018. I'm so grateful to be in my position so that I get to personally share this milestone with each graduate. I'm honored to participate in this ceremony, and it's an experience that's very meaningful to me. My message to each of these graduates is as follows. Choose to be a good noticer. Notice and value all the small moments of each and every day. Notice and value all that surrounds you, especially the people. As your classmate, Jaden Uranius, shared in her Outside the Lines article back in February, don't worry as much about the small things that won't matter the next day. Focus more on the people and the projects that will be in your life for a long time. It is often said that life is not a dress rehearsal. This is it. Once the day is over, it is gone forever. Do the smallest of tasks well with your best effort. Don't just look forward to the weekend without also noticing and cherishing your Mondays through Fridays. Otherwise, you may be missing out on making 71% of your life amazing and memorable. So be in the moment. Choose to be a positive relationship builder. Value creating and maintaining positive relationships with your family, your friends, your teammates, and your coworkers. This is something that Jaden already does, as she also stated in this article, that her most prized possessions were her family and friends. Presume positive intent in others and celebrate their accomplishments without judgment. Unless you're able to walk in the shoes of another person, don't judge their actions. If you can't say something positive about someone, then don't say anything at all. People talk about the view from the balcony. There are times when you should look at a situation from outside yourself so that you can gain multiple perspectives and make better decisions. Be a good listener. It's often more important to listen than it is to talk. A rich life is one in which you are surrounded by people who care about you and by people who know that you care about them. Say please and thank you and be the first to smile because a smile invites connections and conversations with other people. Stay connected to people. Have more face-to-face -face interaction. I don't want you to be the generation that is alone together. Choose to be a grateful person. Show gratitude every day, especially to people. View your cup as half full rather than as half empty. And always be willing to help others so that they can feel grateful. Choose to be a lifelong learner and to give back by helping those who follow behind you. Share your knowledge and your experiences and always seek to learn from those who have journeyed before you. As Todd Rose, author of The End of Average, says, the hardest part of learning something new is not embracing new ideas, but it's letting go of the old one. He also tells us that we should choose to fail well. So think about that, fail well that we should stay calm through adversity and recognize what we can learn from the mistakes we make. Never stop learning. Sam Burns was an inspiring young man from Foxborough, Massachusetts, who died in January of 2014, a few months before he turned 17 years old. And he lived his entire life with a pretty challenging health, um, a health challenge. And he gave some advice for a happy life that I want to share with my graduates. Be okay with what you ultimately can't do because there is so much that you can do. Surround yourself with people you want to be around, people of high quality, and see each other for who we are on the inside. Appreciate and love your family and friends and acknowledge your mentors. 
Keep moving forward, open new doors, and do new things. Always have something to strive for or to look forward to. Always believe that you can change the world. Being brave isn't supposed to be easy. So on that last line of Sam's, being brave isn't supposed to be easy, this is a part of a sort of a plea I have to every graduate. I'm begging each of you to be brave and to choose not to use drugs. It would break my heart to lose any of you to the disease of addiction. This disease can take hold of you after only one use and will not only destroy your brain and your body, but also your hopes and dreams and the hopes and dreams of your family and your friends. Do you want to be successful in college and in the workplace? Do you want to work at a job that brings you joy every day? Do you want to have relationships that are positive and healthy? Do you want to have financial stability? Do you want to have a healthy body and mind? Do you want to eventually have your own family? And do you want to be a leader and a positive role model for all those who follow behind you? So if your answer is yes to these questions, then please value your present you by always saying no to drugs. Your 30-year-old happy, healthy, and successful self will be super grateful for the good decisions that you make along your journey. My final piece of advice for each graduate, there are times when each of us has to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary. When faced with these situations, it is human nature to hesitate. Most of us have a five-second window to move from an idea to an action before our brain kicks in to sabotage us. To break the habit of hesitating, I encourage you to adopt Mel Robbins' five-second rule, and it's not the five-second rule about dropped food on the floor. <laughs> Simply by counting out loud backwards, five, four, three, two, one, you can become a person who chooses to go from autopilot to decision maker. Try doing this on a regular basis, particularly for tasks that you really don't want to do but know that you need to do, and you will experience a positive change in your life. Thank you to all the Mashby Public School staff members who've guided our graduates for the past 13 years, helping us to mold these students into the doers and the leaders that they are today. Thank you to our community partners for supporting these young people and their activities and providing a safe place in which to grow up. Thank you to the parents, guardians, and families for loving these wonderful children unconditionally. Never stop telling them and showing them how much you love them. Finally, thank you to each of the graduates for bringing joy and hope to our world and to my world. Always remember, we care about you. You have value. You don't have to do anything to prove it to us. And nothing is ever going to change our minds. One of my favorite sayings is that happy people don't necessarily have everything, but they just make the most of everything they have. So choose to be a happy person. Your Mashpee community is very proud of you. This is your home. I greatly value and appreciate that each of you chose to graduate from Mashpee High School. We hope that your family, your community, and the Mashpee Public Schools have provided you with a strong foundation to support the structure that you're going to build your adult life. We will always be here for you. Thank you for the positive impact that you've made on my life. You are forever a part of my life's tapestry. As Nelson Mandela says, remember to celebrate milestones as you prepare for the road ahead. And today is one of your life's milestones. Each of you has earned your falcon wings, and we like to say it's now time for you to spread and soar with your wings. So for me, it's great to be in Mashpee, and it's especially great because of this graduating class. So thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent DeBoer. And now for the reason we're all here today, the class of 2018 graduation. Today's graduation marks more than academic achievement. For our graduates, you've spent years dreaming about the freedoms and privileges of adulthood, and I'm confident your education will launch you wherever you want to go or in whatever endeavor you choose to undertake. The class of 2018 marks the 19th graduating class from Mashpee Middle High School, and in welcoming all, all of you to this important day, I want to be sure that we all understand what a special year it has been with this class. I have the distinct honor to serve as the principal for these graduates. I have been with this group since they were in the eighth grade, 
and I've seen them grow as students, athletes, musicians, singers, performers, but most importantly, I've seen them grow into great young men and women. As I look back upon the year with this great group, a few traits about them stand out to me, and I'd like to share them with you this morning. One is their drive to attain excellence in every single endeavor they undertake. The members of the class of 2018 have taken great pride in establishing academic excellence as the norm. This is evidenced by the outstanding institutions that our students have been, have been admitted to excuse me, this year. And this excellence will also be strived for as our graduates will be entering the workforce and serving our nation in the armed forces. We have seen outstanding improvement in MCAS, SAT, and AP schools with overall achievement and with the class of 2018 truly leading the way. We have also seen excellence attained on the athletic fields and the stage through our performing arts and music programs. Another trait is their tremendous sense of school pride, the Falcon pride. Our seniors have taken on the role of supporting one another and the school at literally every single event. Whether it be an athletic game, match or meet, a school play or concert, our seniors are always there in full force. They have taken great care in working to create a school environment that values and celebrates being a Falcon. As Senior Brooke Bridges stated yesterday morning in a salutatorian address, once a Falcon, always a Falcon. The class of 2018 has led the way in creating a school culture based upon respect, hard work, and relationships. Today you will notice a faculty and honored guest in attendance this is a direct testament to the strong relationships that have been built between this class and our faculty and staff, as well as the community. Our graduates are a prime example of the importance and value of building and fostering strong relationships. They have shared our school culture by volunteering and engaging our younger students in the district. As you walk the halls of Nashville Middle High School, you will find a school united and one that takes great pride and ownership of its happenings. When they wear the colors in the big blue M behind me here, there is a tremendous sense of pride behind it, one that I truly believe makes Mashpee such a special place. One final trait is their sense of compassion and community. I have found time and time again that when the times are tough for a family, student, community organization, or neighboring town, our Mashpee students always find a will and a way to give back to ensure that others feel valued and supported. This is evident through many of our outstanding and selfless project, projects completed by the seniors in both senior seminar and school to career. Every graduate here this morning has gone above and beyond the call to service, both in our schools and in our local community. I have seen our graduates raise funds for countless causes, volunteer their time helping others, mentoring our younger students, and just genuinely being there for one another. This is a trait that defines the core of our school community and is one that I celebrate as your principal with great pride. Our seniors have had quite an accomplished year. The football team won the Division IV state championship for the third time in a row. Our basketball team made it to the Boston Garden Student organizations such as Key Club, HOSA, and Student Government participated in state-level activities, and our Technology Center students created countless projects and products to engage the community, including hosting the Cape Cod Mini Maker Fair and participating at the annual MassQ Conference. The fine and performing arts programs once again wowed us with their talent in concerts, art shows, and in our theater productions. Our student government and honor society have hosted blood drives and other local efforts to support our community. And our senior seminar and school to career programs saw wonderful community-based projects which enriched hundreds of lives. As you, As you experience this wonderful day, I urge you to remember your journey through the Mashpee school system and to remind yourself each and every day of the positive impact 
that you have had on so many individuals, teams, groups, and others. I can say with great confidence that our future is truly in good hands, and that as our graduates enter the adult world, albeit higher education, a career, or the armed forces, I know they will find great success. We often hear the term, it's great to be in Mashpee, the phrase. The main reason it's great to be in Mashpee is sitting right before me on this stage this morning, our graduates of the class of 2018, have without a doubt left Mashpee Middle High School a better place. I am truly thankful to serve as your principal, and I extend my most sincere congratulations to each and every one of you as you begin your new journey in life. Remember where you came from, and always know that you have a home here in Mashpee. Congratulations, and I wish you the very, very best of luck. At this time, I'd like to welcome again the Nashville Middle High School Graduation Chamber Choir as they perform the parting glass. by senior Shane Barrows and Ambrosia Ward. At this time, it gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce your commencement speaker, Mr. Dan Leader. Mr. Leader is a retired commander with 24, 22 years of service in the United States Navy. And he came to us. <laughs> and he is about to finish up his 10th year at Mashpee Middle High School as our physics teacher. And we hope he never leaves because it's hard to find people to teach physics. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to welcome him for his remarks to share with the graduating class of 2018.
Mrs. DeBoer, Mr. Balistracci, members of the Mashpee School Committee, fellow, fellow faculty members, friends, and families of the graduates, and most of all, the members of the Mashpee Middle High School graduating class of 2018, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I was quite surprised and somewhat taken aback to be chosen by the class officers as this year's commencement speaker, but I quickly regained my equilibrium by assuring myself that no one remembers what the speaker says at graduation anyway, so no pressure. You will be relieved that due to my occupation, I'm most comfortable speaking for 54 minutes at a go, but Mr. Balistrazzi convinced me that maybe I should go a little shorter today. There are many tried and true themes for such a speech, such as, you represent the future, seize the day, embrace what life has to offer, try new things, the list goes on and on. After some reflection, I decided on two somewhat contradictory thoughts, but hopefully they'll at least give you something to think about as you embark on your next phase of life. According to school records, approximately three quarters of you have been in school together since kindergarten at the Casey Coombs School. So you have, you have spent your entire academic career to date in the Mashpee school system. Naturally, most of the friends you have made come from the ranks of your classmates. Now, as you embark on the next phase of your life, whether you're heading to further education, to the military, or to the workforce, you will be exposed to a much greater pool of acquaintances. I'm certainly not advocating that you abandon the friends you have made to date. In fact, for many of you, the friends you have today are the friends who will still be in your inner circle at your 50th reunion in 2068. Yikes. However, regardless of your path, you are sure to invite new people into your life. My first piece of advice is to choose your friends wisely. As I'm sure you've heard once or twice from your parents, and have certainly observed yourself in your own experiences, your friends exert a large influence on your life. In my former life, while I was still on active duty and serving as commanding officer of Navy Recruiting District New England, one of my responsibilities was to interview applicants to the Navy who admitted prior drug use. Based on that interview, I had to decide if they should be allowed to join the Navy, which prohibits any drug use. Almost without exception, the reason for that first use was the same, peer pressure. Those were friends who weren't really friends at all. On the other hand, the right friends can be the key to getting us through tough times and helping us to deal with life's challenges successfully. As my pastor at Cape Cod Church, Ben Feldot, discussed in his sermon just last Sunday, the best friends are those who are willing to confront us when we are heading in the wrong direction and able to push us back on track. To use a sports analogy, the great ice hockey legend Wayne Gretzky was asked how he could be so consistently successful on the ice. He replied, a good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. Good friends are the ones who can see beyond present circumstances to help us achieve our goals, encourage us to make good decisions, and allow us to end up where we really wanted to be. In the Navy, a person's rate is his or her's primary job throughout his or her career, be it sonar technician, mess management specialist, nuclear machinist mate. There was a common expression to emphasize the importance of this initial decision upon entering the service. Choose your rate, choose your fate. Borrowing a British term for friends, in many ways the equivalent for much of life is choose your mates, choose your fate. So choose wisely. For my second theme, I would like to address something of even greater importance, not just for you as individuals, but for the future of our nation and our world. As the older generation is forced to acknowledge at every graduation, the future is in the hands of you and your peers around the globe. There are always challenges and reasons for doom and gloom predictions, but there is also always cause for optimism. You will have opportunities for jobs that haven't even been thought of yet. You will be able to take advantage of ever more powerful technology to solve problems. You, the next generation, will have the ability to mold the world in new directions. As you embark on this journey, remember that whether you are continuing on with formal education or not, it is essential that you keep learning in order to be a productive member of our society. Perhaps knowing a long list of facts is no longer as important as it once was. After all, any specific piece of knowledge is available in seconds from the internet, as long as you know how to ask for it. So what is important? I would argue that your continuing goal should be in honing your ability to think, to analyze the situation, come up with possible methods of addressing issues, 
try something out, get feedback, adjust as needed, and continue to work towards the best solution to follow. In this ever more complex world, no one can be expected to come up with a solution to every problem alone. Teamwork is more and more the norm at most companies. And this leads me to what I believe is the longest lasting and most vexing issue that has faced humanity since the beginning of time, the mentality of us versus them. We're a social species, and we like to be with our own kind. But what does that mean? We like to be in a group of people that are like us, and anyone who is not like us is them. But how do we decide? Unfortunately, it is often for easily identified traits like the proverbial race, religion, or country of national origin. More subtle, but perhaps more dangerous, is the tendency for us to want to associate only with people who think like us, who agree with us on every important issue. In our new world of social media and the plethora of available news sources, it is easy to find those who are always like-minded. With a click of a button, they are all our friends. And the more we are reinforced in our beliefs, the more confirmation we have that we are right and they are wrong. Before long, we can easily convince ourselves that we, the members of our group, are the one with the answers. They, the other people, are simply deluded. Now, this is true at all cases. For those who can't see in the back, the shirt says, I'm an engineer. To save time, let's just assume that I'm always right. Or, I'm, always, I'm sorry, I'm never wrong. See? But if everybody goes into an argument with that mindset, we're not going to accomplish very much. History has shown us time and time again that progress is made only by opening ourselves up to new ideas. Once, the Earth was the center of the universe, fixed in place while everything else in the heavens rotated around it. Once, only birds and other winged creatures would ever fly. Once, the moon was far beyond the reach of man. In each of these cases, we knew what was correct, but we were wrong. Only by opening our minds to new possibilities will we be able to see the truth. By committing to a life of us versus them, the most dangerous result is that we consider any transaction to be zero sum. In other words, for us to gain, they have to lose. But by talking and listening to each other, with the emphasis on the listening, everyone can win. One good example is trade. If I'm better at one thing and you're better at another, we can both have more by trading. But sometimes all that's required is talking with someone else, and most importantly, listening, to find out how both of us can end up satisfied. In his complete guide to money, budgeting guru Dave Ramsey tells this story. There were once two elderly ladies who had one orange between them, which they were negotiating for. After a lengthy discussion, these two ladies could not come up with a solution ex except to split the difference. So they cut the orange in half, each taking one half. One lady proceeded to peel the orange and use the peel for baking a cake, while the other peeled her half and ate the fruit. If the two had spent time through good communication, finding out what the other's needs were for the orange, they both could have had the whole orange, and neither would have been the lesser. The point of the story is that by using creativity and communication when dealing with others, you can both end up with more. I would like to end with a paraphrased and condensed version of one of the most famous stories from the Bible. In Luke chapter 10, a, ma a man asked Jesus what he needs to do to inherit eternal life. The man already knows both parts of the answer, Love the Lord fully and love your neighbor as yourself. But then he asks, and who is my neighbor? Jesus then tells a parable about a man who was beaten by robbers and left for dead by the side of the road. Two religious people see him and pass him by. But then a Samaritan comes along and saves the man's life. If ever there was a them to the Jews of the day, he was a Samaritan. In fact, the Samaritan is described as a despised Samaritan. However, after the story was told, the man who had asked Jesus the question could answer it himself, saying that the neighbor of that beaten man was the one who had shown him mercy. Therefore, as you go into the world, look for new neighbors. They may not be the ones you naturally gravitate towards. In fact, they may well be people you would think of as them. But if enough of you, the next generation across the world, can make the effort to turn them into a greater us, you will indeed have found the key to making the future brighter for all. Thank you and good luck. We're counting on you.
Thank you, Mr. Leader. At this time, I would like to welcome back our Master Middle High School graduation band as they perform an excerpt from Brave.
Mastery families, friends, and class of 2018. Today is a very special day for all of you as you complete an important milestone in your life. It's also an extra. Sorry. It's also an extra special day for me and my family as my daughter Alexia will be walking across the stage with you. I personally want to thank you all for the memories throughout the years. That will take with me forever. Whether it was the third grade field trip to the Plymouth Plantation, the fifth grade field trip to Boston, the sixth grade whale watch, or the seventh grade overnight field trip to the sea camp. <laughs> where I got in trouble with Miss Arnold and uh, Mr. Allen for, for taking my cabin out for an adventure after Kirk. I had the honor and privilege to watch all of you grow from kids to the extraordinary young adults who walked in. As you all sit here in your final performance of Matthew, you should feel accomplished and proud. But don't leave it all behind inside of these walls. No matter what path you choose to follow, whether it's college, the military, grade school, or going directly into the work workforce, continue to seek out this feeling you're experiencing today. Don't just wait for the big moments in life. Be proud of the small accomplishments, as they will lead to bigger things that will help you reach your goals. But remember this. A French writer, Antoine, whose last name I can't even begin to pronounce, <laughs> once said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. We're extremely proud of each and every one of you. Witness these moments, witnessing these moments is a reminder for all of us on the committee why we choose to serve this community. The success and accomplishments of this class exemplifies why it's great to be met, free and met. On behalf of the Matthew School Committee, congratulations class of 2018 and go Falcons. about that time. Woo! To our graduates, on this second day of June 2018, we present you this diploma. This diploma signifies that you have honorably completed the course of study prescribed by the Mashpee School Committee for graduation from Mashpee Middle High School. At this time, we will begin the diploma ceremony. Our graduates this morning will not only be receiving a diploma, they'll also be receiving a copy of All the Places You Will Go by Dr. Seuss as a gift from the school committee.
Ian Thorson Ahern. Tyler Terry Andre. Matthew Bags. Jack Baker. <laughs> Kaya Irene Baptiste. Shane Barrows. <laughs> Michael Christopher Barrows, Jr. Rachel Louise Barrows. Shyla Danielle Bingham Hendricks. Benjamin R.J. Bonenberger. <laughs> Carl Frederick Bonenberger. Ilya Boyd. <laughs> Brooke Elizabeth Leilani Bridges. Adriana Taya Briggs Mitrakostas. <laughs> Maxwell Edmund Burke. Kenneth Burton.
Anthony Jerome Cambro. Brianna Desiree Cheatham. <laughs> Kevin Michael Childs. James Edward Cohen. Brooke Alexandra Costa. Peyton Marie Costa. Sydney Isabella Costa. Sophia Lorraine Costa. Connor Cross. Jamie Sons Daly. Gianna Rose DePaulo. Michael Richard Dugan. Mackenzie Arlene Dutra. <laughs> Roman Rosanoff Julev.
Bryce Matthew Eaton. Jaden Maria Irenius. Kelsey Ann Ferguson. Naya Firmino. <laughs> Hannah Jean Fitzpatrick. Patrick Flynn. <laughs> Cache Kim Foster. Camden Adler Frazier. <laughs> Michael Caleb Frazier. Maya Fudala. Raul Garcia. Ashley M. Geisler. <laughs> Theodore Josen in absentia. Anthony J. Gonsalves. Go, 
Yaslin Gonzalez. Miranda Govea. Dawson Nicholas Gadetti. <laughs> Frederick Abraham Hanna the third. Tiffany Hassey. <laughs> Benjamin M. Horrigan. Joseph Damon Howard. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Howard. Jacob Robert Johnston. <laughs> Celia Elizabeth Crafter. Shane Michael LaCroix. <laughs> Zachary James Landry. Andrew J. Legier. <laughs> 
Nathan Richard McCarthy. Joshua McEnroe, in absentia. Rachel Michelle McEnroe. Regine Janet McFarlane. John Paul McNamara. Leticia Medeiros. Mackenzie Ann Maniz. Carolina Elizabeth Morgado. Michael G. Murphy. Krista Danielle Murray. Robert William Nasuti. Tara Lucia Palermo. Kevin Miley Pulse. <laughs> James Thomas Ramondetta the second. Jack Charles Richmond.
Lily Ray Rogers. Sarah Marie Rogers. <laughs> Jaden Christopher Ross. Molly Ryan. <laughs> Thomas Joseph Ryder in absentia. Nicholas David Sabatini. <laughs> Louis Daniel Santiago. Alexia Diane Santos. Dane Orlando Scale. Danielle Marie Shea. Remy Josephine Shea. Grace Abbott Shin. Krista Yvonne Sines. <laughs> Sophia Snyder.
Peyton Rose Sutherland. Kea Sonny Turner King. <laughs> Joshua Michael Panitsky. Asia Rose Von Henschel. Ambrosia Rose Ann Ward. Catherine Amber Wellington. Grace Lillian Whipper. Michaelia Venise Williams. <laughs> Rebecca Hope Wilson. Emma Maria Wise. <laughs> Rachel Ann Marie Woodward. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Master Middle High School graduating class of 2018.
At this time, I'd like to welcome for her valedictorian address, the National Middle High School valedictorian for the class of 2018, Ms. Celia Crafter. <laughs> Celia is an actress, singer, dancer, and activist. During high school, she was president of the Gay Straight Alliance, president of the Tri-M Music Honor Society, and vice president of Mu Alpha Theta, the Mathematics Honor Society. She greeted the school with the morning announcements, played alto saxophone in the jazz band, and performed in five productions with the Blue Falcon Theater Company. You may have seen her as the Wicked Witch of the West, Willy Wonka, or as Ursula the Evil Sea Witch on the stage here at MMHS. In the fall, Celia will begin her, human, uh, her studies excuse me, at Columbia University, where she will double major in drama and human rights. She plans to use her platform as an actress to be a voice for women and LGBTQ plus people around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, your valedictorian, Celia Crafter. Good morning, Mashby, and happy Saturday. As we know, today isn't just any Saturday. This particular Saturday marks an end and a beginning. The end of our beginning and the beginning of the rest of our lives. Someday, just begin. I would like to take a moment to thank some of the people who made this day possible for us. Our deans, Mr. Rumberger and Ms. Melby, for keeping the school running like clockwork. Guidance director, Mrs. Kett, for guiding us towards our individual paths to success. Principal Balastracci, for shaping this school into one we are proud to graduate from. Superintendent DeVoer, for endlessly supporting our class and every Mashpee student. The Mashpee Public Schools faculty, for teaching and believing in us from day one. And all of our parents, family members, and friends who have grown us into the adults we are today. Thank you. I would like to especially thank my grandparents, Celine and Jim, and my mom, Pamela. <laughs> Almost 11 years ago, my mom and I moved from Hamburg, Germany, to live with my grandparents here in Mashpee. She wanted to make sure I grew up in a place that would give me roots. I can say with confidence that she picked the right place. Over the past decade, teachers, friends, and community members have opened their arms to make me feel like I am truly a part of Mashpee. Whether you have lived in Mashpee your whole life or you ended up here along the way, we all have roots here. These roots are the community that has supported us, the teachers that have guided us, and the bonds we have with friends and as a class. We will always have these roots. They are planted here, and as we grow and learn and change and explore, we will always have the Mashpee community standing behind us. We've been told that we are an exceptional class, a class that, as a whole, has gone above and beyond. We have raised the bar and created a new standard of what it means to graduate from Mashpee High School. We brought Mashpee to TD Garden and Gillette Stadium. We launched global efforts to connect our community to people in Laos and Bangladesh, we entertained audiences show after show. We ushered greater technological innovation into the classroom. We brought our passion for learning into our classes. We played great music. We practiced hard on the field. We served as mentors to underclassmen. We created art, and we brought so many new perspectives and outlooks and ideas to this little town. We did it all. We are walking, talking representations of the phrase, it's great to be in Mashpee. And now, there are limitless horizons in front of us. We are bright young people who can change the world if we put our minds to it. We are capable of anything as long as we embrace who we are. Tony Spadafora is an artist whose work I saw at a local gallery a couple of years ago. This description was printed on the wall next to one of her pieces. The world from 30,000 feet is a huge puzzle made up of shapes, colors, and endless strings of connections and roads. Within that chaos, we find places to live. We choose a place. The place becomes us, and we become that place. When you need to move on, whether by choice or by force, 
You can choose what pieces to take with you, or not. What will you take with you? Graduates, you could close your eyes, take a moment, and feel gratitude for it. We, as the class of 2018, are the first high school class in history to be born half in one millennium and half in another. Crazy, right? We've experienced this shift in millennia throughout our academic careers. We remember TVs being rolled into classrooms on carts and those clear plastic projector slides from elementary school. Yet in high school, we used Wi-Fi and Chromebooks in every class. We grew up with High School Musical, and we're still in high school for Lady Bird. We bridge generations. Let's think about the year 2050. In 2050, Earth will be home to almost 10 billion people. The majority of us will live in urban areas. Virtual reality, self-driving cars, and more efficient energy systems will all become part of our everyday lives. Traditional news media will be obsolete due to a rise of individuals using the internet to report on niche topics. No more fake news. Everyday people will be responsible for environmental conservation efforts. Technology will be used even more to organize and empower marginalized groups. Food production will be relocalized, and we will be healthier, with 120 being a very reachable age. This future is only 32 years away, before our 50th class reunion. Today, we are sitting here in these funny hats, and we're celebrating. But tomorrow, we could be making major decisions at a leading corporation composing the score of the next Academy Award-winning film, ensuring the security of the people as a federal investigator, inventing the medical technology that will cure the incurable, or fighting for this country with the U.S. Marine Corps and the armed forces. We stand on the precipice of a world being hurtled into unbounded innovation and change, and we have the power to drive it. Isn't that exciting? This is our springboard. As we walked across this stage today, our work is just beginning. I believe that we have the power to make a difference in this world. If we be ourselves and shine a light on every person we meet, we can create a future that is worth living in. That is all we have for you today. I'm Celia Krechter. Congratulations, Mashpee. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the stage the class president, Frederick Hanna III. <laughs> Frederick has served in the position of president of his class for all four years. He was also a four-year student liaison to the school committee for the Mashpee Public Schools. Frederick has been involved in several initiatives and community activities, and he's also been a member of the FBLA and other clubs that have gone on in student government and uh, student council that have gone on to reach the State House. Frederick also plays baseball on our nicely seated baseball team, which we play in their first game uh, later on in the week. And ladies and gentlemen, your president, Frederick Hanna. Good morning, everyone. Here we are. We finally did it. We're all here because of each other. I remember back in seventh grade when Ms. Arnold approached me in the cafeteria to run for student government. I didn't know what student government was. Our MCAT scores brought our school to a level two. Our strong academic and athletic achievements made an impact that will be felt for years to come. Who gets to Gillette three years in a row in the garden in the same year? We did. We are the type of class that has gone out of our way to make a difference by giving back to helping out one another when times are tough. Do you remember Rachel's challenge? It was an anti-bullying assembly. That's when we found out how much compassion we have for one another. The sense of community and compassion truly sets our class and our school apart from others. 
We faced a lot of obstacles these past years, but we wouldn't have overcome them if it wasn't for the genuine concern to support one another. Even so, we knew how to have fun. This speech was actually one of the hardest things I've had to do. One memory, I, I asked for your help and asked for a few memories that we've had along the way. One memory was the book fairs back in fifth grade. Some of us bought books, while others bought stencils. In seventh grade, we were given a trip to sea camps. And although our senior t-shirts, keeping it classy, didn't sell well, I believe we got that trip because our class has class. Another memory was the boat cruise in Washington, D.C., which showed not one guy was brave enough to ask a girl to dance, but by the end of the night, we were singing, squished together, dancing, to Don't Stop Believing. Looking back, these past four years have been very memorable. All of us have been together since we first walked into the Casey Coon School. We grew up in the school system, playing sports with each other, to the musicals and plays being put on at the Quashnet all the way through to the high school. Our friendships we created will last forever. We have faced challenges over the years, some that have been tough and others more easily resolved, such as trying to figure out who will sing the national anthem at scholarship night. We may not have always known everything, but we sure have always figured out how to get the job done. That mentality will be with us for life. We're all successful in many different ways. We got on that bus the first day of kindergarten, leaving our home for the first time. And look at us now, graduating high school, ready to go out and make an impact on this world. We have the ability to do that. Not many people can say they can go out and make an impact, but every single person in this class has the capability to succeed. It's a nice feeling knowing you graduated. Here we are, ready to leave each other for the world ahead of us. Maybe one day we'll be working for one another. No one can predict the future. But one thing for certain is that the legacy this class has made on this community, school, and students will be felt for years to come. Maybe we'll leave Mashby. Maybe some will stay. The beauty is that we all don't know what lies ahead of us. But we will use the tools and skills that we have learned at this school to navigate through the journey of life. As your class president, along with my officers, Brooke, Megan, and Brianna, thank you. Ms. Riley, our class advisor, made Senior Week special for all of us. These are, there are people that go above and beyond. Ms. Riley went through the roof for all of us. It's a sad goodbye as many of us will be heading off to college, going into the workforce, or joining the military. But one thing I know is that we will always stay in touch with each other because we've been like that since we were little. Mashby has been a special community for all of us. It will be a place for all of us to come back to. It's our home. The connections that we've made in this town will stay with us for years to come. This small, tight-knit community has supported us since the first day we walked into kindergarten. As we graduate, let's make the community proud of the young adults we've all turned into. I wrote a little something, and I feel it's a perfect way uh, to end this speech. Here it goes. <clears throat> Sit back and relax, take a look all around. It might be the last time you see everyone from this town. We're a close class, been close since day one. We can finally say we're almost done. What a ride it has been, Gillette bound three straight years. TD Garden was our fate. Behind it all was our hard work and determination. It's been our aspirations and dedication that have led us on this road. From our trip on the railroad to the sauce game this week, we sure haven't missed a beat. It's the sacrifices made and hard work put in because the grind never stops. We've shined as a class, but have been humble through it all. Not one leader taking charge, but a group effort to lead us all. It started the first year we arrived. We came together and thrived. We raised the most money by a freshman class and surpassed all our expectations. We built a strong foundation. We certainly aren't done yet. I can bet you a sure we'll always be in touch. We got each other's backs. We'll be there in a rush. Who knows where we'll go? Maybe someone will host the next big show or headline the next play in Broadway. To the class of 2018, congratulations. We know we'll be great. No need to debate. At this time, I respectfully ask my fellow members of the graduating class of 2018 to please stand me and join me in the tassel ceremony.
ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the class of 2018. I know our students will go out and do great things, and always remember, you have a home and support system here in Mashpee. I cannot be more proud of each and every one of these graduates here this morning. This concludes our ceremony. I wish you the very, very best of luck, and please join us in clapping and applauding for our graduates as they recess out of the gymnasium. Thank you, and have a great day.